back to those, those days in school and university when the conversation about feminism was very different, wasn't it? <laughs> well, people think that the big revolution in society happened in the 1960s, but I always remind people the 60s didn't happen until 1968. <laughs> and when I was in university in the early 60s, uh, one of the first conversations about this I remember, I said to uh, one of my uh, fellow students, a man, a young man, well, um, it's shocking that there aren't any women writers on our entire course. And he started to say, well, no woman has ever written a great novel. <laughs> well, was he and reflective of, of, of other cats in your class? Absolutely, yeah? absolutely. And I went, I started to argue with him and say, well, uh, uh, women are just as intelligent as men. I never got to finish that sentence because he was so astonished, he burst out laughing <laughs> that I could say anything so obviously ridiculous. Right. And that was the tenor of the times. What was your experience like at that time? I, I was probably a, a sexist pig at that time. Uh, <laughs> That I mean, being, being honest, I, I've never known why Michelle married me, to tell you the truth. And she has frequently said that it took her 20 years to turn me into a human being. And, and, that's, that's, prob and, and that's probably true. But I mirrored the chauvinism of the day. I can remember when, when two of us led a campaign for the CCF on campus during the mock parliament, our poster consisted of a scantily clad Swedish model and the and the insignia <laughs> for the CCF for the CCF and the and the insignia <laughs> do, you, do you need therapeutic intervention are you going to go right over there and the, and the, and the, and the words read if socialism can do this for Sweden, imagine what we can have at the University of Toronto. Fantastic. And I was a, so you see, I was almost beyond redemption, salvaged by Michelle. <laughs>